is about research in phenomenology and high energy physics and internship of opportunity. So I understand that you have already chosen your topics and I'm also taking into account that you all participated my standard model, uh, my standard model to BSM course. So it's a, it's a seminar, but it is also a little bit uh, parts has, as parts of a lecture, okay? So some things should be familiar and something should be uh, new. Okay, so phenomenology. Ah, I'm not sure, is it, uh, is it centered? Are you on page two? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So I thought I need to talk a little bit about uh, what is actually phenomenology. So you see this, uh, this, this line here with research areas. So on the left, this is formal theory, okay? Theoretical physics, and I could even have gone more to the left, there would be maybe mathematical physics, okay? So this is theory, theory, okay? And on the right is almost engineering stuff. So how to build detectors and beams and colliders and so on. But when you go from left to right, uh, you kind of meet in the middle. Okay, and what that's exactly phenomenology. So from theoretical physics, you can have beautiful, um, maybe even from mathematics, uh, ideas about how nature could be composed of. Okay, but that's usually these are structures. Okay, so you have to do something to actually do model building, to match these ideas, to bring them into context, uh, say, because the standard model is the the best of our best approximation of nature. So, so you have to make sure that your theory model contains the standard model, and then there can be new ingredients. Okay, and you want to check which whether this model is correct. I mean, you cannot, you can never prove a model correct, but you can rule it out. Okay, so out of this large number of models in theory space, you can rule out some if you compare them to data. And this is what phenomenology does. So in phenomenology, you are doing fits, you are proposing observables, you are talk to your experimental friends, P please do this analysis because then we can learn something about this, this model and the mass region and so on. So pheno really is in the middle between say model building from the theory and the physics analysis uh, at LHCB or at, at ATLAS, okay? and. Uh, and it really, it's the very method that connects theory to data and, and vice versa. So if you just have a, if you only have a measurement, uh, well, you always need a measurement to compare to something, to have an interpretation, to make it useful, okay? So just data is no good, but just models is also no good because uh, you don't know which one is realized in nature, okay? So it's really, it's a big handshake. So this is Pheno. So we want to find out uh, what's beyond the standard model. That's this, that's this X here, okay. And um, the current setting in high energy physics, okay, is okay, it's 2023. Um, we haven't seen new physics or we have not observed new physics at the high energy frontier. So the searches, uh, at Atlas and CMS, they have uh, well, they have uh, given us bounds and limits and maybe some fluctuations. Okay, um, but we haven't observed anything except, say, the Higgs. Okay, so the precision frontier. So these are these uh, indirect searches, uh, B physics. Okay, um, there are there are anomalies. Okay. Anomalies means it's not 100% significant, so it's maybe just a few sigma, but it is at least something that people discuss, okay? And those are related to muons, and of course, there's also G minus two, and there are a few others, puzzles, okay? So that's the situation. So in this view of these two facts, uh, the standard model is still our best thing. I mean, it's a life and kicking, okay? These anomalies, they challenge it, but it's, taking at face value, the standard model is live. And uh, our big questions um, remain. Questions like origin of dark matter, um, baryogenesis or leptogenesis, so what creates the 
uh, meta-antimatter asymmetry, um, the nature of gravitation, the origin of flavor, uh, are neutrinos majorana or not, uh, they, they remain. Okay, and uh, after, overall, above all, of course, there's when you go to very high energies, what happens at the Planck scale, um, this, this, all these effects that are related to, to gravitation. Okay, and, and uh, well, to some, we have uh, experimental uh, evidence by now, which is really exciting, like black holes um, from from astrophysics and gravitational waves, uh, but the nature of, I mean, the quantum nature is, is an open research topic. So um, here we are not doing any more gravitation at the moment, but uh, we would like to uh, go on with this situation, okay? We haven't established new physics, but still we know that we, 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 we are aware that the standard model has flaws or, or shortcomings. So there are certain directions that one can identify uh, to make progress at the Fino interface, at the theory experiment interface. And these regions, they are of course hot topics uh, within uh, the EMAP uh, consortium. Um, and one big topic is of course its flavor. And it's uh, not just beauty physics or top physics, it's essentially all of them. And there's charm and there's also chaos and uh, a tool where you can organize all of these together. No, historically, there's a, in some people say, oh, I do B physics. And some people say, well, I'm an Atlas, I do top physics. And some people say, no, I do charm physics. I work for BES, okay? Uh, when you want to combine them, you need some framework where you can actually do it and learn something about flavor together globally. And that's this effective field theory that's SMEFT, okay? Um, another big directions are uh, uh, invisibles, okay? So invisible particles that you don't reconstruct, you see them as uh, missing energy. And these are, of course, neutrinos. So the big questions in the neutrino sector is, of course, their, their absolute mass, uh, whether they are, um, whether they are Mario, 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 Mariana, Majorana or not. Uh, and, uh, of course, um, how about CP violation in, in the PMNS matrix? Okay. And uh, the other direction in these invisibles is of course dark matter, which is something very hypothetical and it, it's, it's, it can be very light and it can be very heavy. There are many, many models, okay? The parameter space uh, that reproduces the correct relic density is, is, is enormous, okay? But in, in a collider experiment or in a particle physics experiment, these dark matter candidates are always associated with invisibles or with at least very long-lived particles, okay? Displaced vertices and so on. And the last one um, I'm highlighting here is related to the Higgs. Uh, so the Higgs has uh, couplings to fermions and some of them we have observed and measured. And there, you know, in the standard model, there's a linear relation between the Yukawa coupling, which is a coupling to the Higgs and the mass of a particle and we have, uh, so it's always linear. There's also this famous plot with that. Okay, and it works for top and it works for bottom, it works for taus and it also works for muons, but uh, the lighter the fermions get, the, uh, well, the, the smaller is the coupling to the Higgs and that means the information is, um, is not so good. So checking Higgs coupling is, is, is one of the uh, key, well, that's, that's a key measurement for, for the high luminosity LHC. And on the theoretical side, you can of course also ask uh, why is it, what's the, what sets the electroweak scale? Why is it so low? Why is it 100 GV? And uh, the macroom stability. So the Higgs is meta stable in the standard model. And, uh, and uh, where well, you can ask yourself, what does it take to cure that? Okay, so that's also a direction for new physics. So, so all these three blocks I've here, I mentioned here, uh, flavor, so standard model fermions coupling to something, neutrinos coupling to something, and the Higgs, uh, they are viewed also as portals to new physics. So you, 
you say, well, we start with the standard model, we build colliders with the standard model particles, we collide protons, or we collide maybe we collide electrons at Bell 2, or maybe in the future we um, even collide uh, muons. Uh, but uh, we, in these standard model particles, they they have, they provide, uh, they couple to BSM physics, so they are portals. Okay. So uh, what has uh, the model side to offer in 2023? Well, there's clearly some main or major themes in BSM model building, okay? And uh, well, some are really bottom up. So bottom up model building, they are data driven, they're inspired by observations or, or, or yes, uh, from LHCB and uh, uh, the very dominant ones are leptoquark and C prime models that have uh, become very uh, famous with the onset of the of the anomalies. Okay, and uh, yes, so there were no leptoquarks really. I mean, people were more like interested in supersymmetry maybe ten years ago. But uh, the leptoquarks in the C prime model that allow to couple differently to different uh, uh, flavors uh, that that have really uh, become very popular. And the other stream that people are very interested in for many, many reasons is these low energy uh, zoo, okay? So axions or axion-like particles, dark photons. So it's really, it's low energy, it's light. It's a very light and they couple very feeble, okay? And this is why they haven't been seen yet, okay? Um, so it can be like GeV, but it can even be be lighter. And uh, uh, a third direction where people are interested in is, is uh, well, strong dynamics, composite Higgs models at a few TV. So this is definitely a topic for for colliders. Uh, and then okay, and D is okay. There people have uh, uh, still working in say supersymmetry and guts and extra dimensional settings. Those were popular uh, by the turn of the millennium, okay? So it's, so what has changed then? Well, it has changed the parameter space uh, because the LHC has really carved into that. So you have to, uh, it has removed large parts of the parameter space. So they are looking now in different regions. So it's still, uh, it's still an open topic, okay, in model building. So there's OSCO E and you can put your, your, your favorite model in, in E if you haven't seen it in A, B, C or D, okay. But what I would like to talk for, say, essentially the remainder of my lecture is uh, the new kit on the block, okay? A new class of models, a new class of BSM models uh, from theory. And I would like to guide you so this is on this very plot, this is on the very left. We start here almost with mathematical physics, but uh, so, so this is an idea, it's coined asymptotic safety, and it's uh, a name that is associated with Feinberg who used it uh, for gravity in the 70s. But uh, this asymptotic safety uh, conjecture, uh, you can use it also for BSM model building. So uh, we start here with uh, a formal idea and we build models, real models, standard model extensions with particles and couplings. And then of course we can do phenomenology. So we can ask our experimental friends whether this model can be searched for at the LHC. And we can also say, look, with this type of model, we can fix things in that are not uh, good in the standard model, uh, say we can remove poles or instabilities. And we can even address uh, uh, the flavor anomalies. We can explain G minus two. And uh, so how, as, a, as a theorist, okay, you start with a theoretical idea. It can even be formal, but I would like to uh, take you with me on this journey from this, from this very left to phenomenology, okay, to where we can talk about cross sections and, and uh, well, branching ratios and so on, okay, and then of course to make this uh, plot for going from really from left to right, of course uh, we need to have some 
experimental friends to look for our model at the LHC. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Let's uh, start with asymptotic safety at model building. Okay, so, uh, so this plot should remind you about asymptotic freedom. So asymptotic freedom is a feature of the strong interaction. And it says that you go to higher energy and the coupling alpha s gets smaller and smaller. It, gets at, it goes asymptotically to zero. And that is a prediction of the theory, okay? And uh, what is shown here is an analysis from the ATLAS collaboration and they measure alpha s at different energy scales, okay? So on the x-axis is the energy scale in logarithmic scale and on the y-axis is alpha s, okay? And it's compared uh, uh, to a theory curve, okay? So you see it, it, is, it is pristine, okay? So the data really match uh, the prediction of the standard model and alpha s drops towards higher energies. Of course, at some point we are losing data because the LHC can only probe this high, okay? So this plot goes maybe until two, three, four TV, okay? Uh, but in this range, it's pristine, okay? It seems that asymptotic freedom is, uh, is, a, is a, was a was a beautiful concept that you can, that is reflected in, in the available data, okay? So why does alpha s behave like this? Well, you remember this probably uh, asymptotic freedom. Again, alpha s vanishes for mu goes to zero. Mm. And uh, the reason is that where you can describe this energy or this change of alpha s with energy scale by a beta function. So the change of alpha s with the energy scale, and it's not d alpha s over d mu, I wrote it as d alpha s over d logarith logarithm mu, okay? And that's what one calls beta function. And this beta function can be computed, and at lowest order, it looks very simple. It's just alpha s squared times a coefficient minus b, okay? So there's a reason why there's this minus sign, okay? Uh, and uh, that means that this beta function is negative. So there are two plots here. On the left, I plot alpha, and on the right, I plot the beta function as a function of alpha, okay? And in black is the strong interaction, okay? So on the left, this is, this is uh, my sketch of what Atlas has measured. Alpha s drops this mu, Okay, and this on the right, there's this beta function. So it's alpha s squared times minus b, and b in the standard model is positive. It assumes a value 14, and that is, uh, is a result uh, of the fact how many quarks we have, and uh, that QCD is the gauge, has a gauge symmetry of uh, SU, SUN and, and colors, and we have three types of colors, SU3. Okay, and that's that gives you 14 and it's positive. So uh, the beta function in QCD is negative, okay? Okay, and when you can, when you solve, this is a differential equation and you can solve it mm, with a measured value of alpha s as an input and, and that you, then you can get this, this curve here, okay? And in a, in a for, more formal argument, uh, you can ask, uh, when does alpha s change no more? So you are asking the question, when does the beta function have a fixed point? So when does the beta function vanish for which value of alpha s? And the answer is, well, if alpha s is zero, okay, then the beta function vanishes. And you can make an analysis that, and you find out that this is a stable, ultraviolet fixed point, okay? It's attractive, okay? So this is what this arrow here means. So so uh, for larger energies, uh, alpha s really is sucked into this fixed point. So at high energies, this theory becomes non-interacting. Fox and gluons will be free, okay? Asymptotic, asymptotically at least, okay? That's asymptotic freedom. 
Okay, and just as a reminder of the other possibility that's realized also in the standard model, uh, let's consider QED or if you wish, uh, the hypercharge, which is an abelian gauge group, it's alpha. Okay, and the beta function looks the same, except that this B coefficient is negative. So negative B coefficient times this minus sign makes the beta function positive. So in blue here in this plot, this is uh, the beta function for the hypercharge, okay? So uh, you can also solve for, uh, you can plot, uh, solve this differential equation and uh, determine uh, the running of alpha. And then you see it grows with energy scale and it grows and it grows and it grows and uh, it diverges. Okay, it doesn't stop growing. Okay, and this is what we call a Landau pole. It runs into a pole at some energy scale, which is in the standard model, it's very high, it's way above the Planck scale. Okay, but it means that at that point we have lost control over uh, our theory. Okay, so a Landau pole is something kind of bad. Okay, asymptotic freedom is, is nice, a Landau pole is something bad. Okay, and uh, okay, so you can. Of course, also this beta function for QED with the wrong sign B coefficient uh, as a fixed point, but uh, this fixed point is infrared attractive. Okay, in the UV anything can go. So the so the the two things that can happen is asymptotic freedom in what we see here in the standard model that a coupling vanishes, or a coupling totally blows up. Okay. So yeah, now you can ask, well, maybe there's a third possibility. What should a coupling do? So it either goes to a fixed point or it vanishes or it blows up. And then of course, asymptotic safety comes uh, into play and asymptotic safety means where well, it goes, the coupling goes into a fixed point, but uh, in an interacting one. So alpha s in the standard model goes into a fixed point, but the fixed point is zero but it could run in principle uh, also into a finite value. And that is asymptotic uh, safety. So now we can ask, how can we uh, find models that do that? So that it's clearly, it's a beautiful mathem it's a theoretical idea that asking, okay, can we design models where, this, where the couplings run into, for higher energy into finite values, okay. So we have to do a little bit more, more work. So here's the beta function for the strong coupling constant at higher order, okay. So if you only have B, it's a one loop coefficient. So there's a two loop coefficient and these coefficients are no, they can be computed, okay. So you, you see already that, uh, uh, because C is positive and B is also positive, that in principle, these terms here could cancel and give rise to a fixed point. So there's the previous fixed point, the one from asymptotic freedom, but there's also one from cancellations of these two terms. Okay, so now the plot looks a little bit different. So we plot here again, uh, beta functions as a function of alpha. Here on the left is a QCD-like theory where this B coefficient is positive. Okay, that's like in QCD that the number is 14. Okay, so uh, it means that this beta function, it has two zeros. It has this one and then it goes down and then it goes back up. Okay. The point here is, is a UV fixed point, we call it asymptotic freedom. And this one here, it is there, it's a, it's a fixed point, but it turns out that this one, uh, it, it is related to the slope at which this curve changes here sign is only infrared attractive. It's what people call a bank sucks fixed point. Okay, so with B positive, you are not getting asymptotic safety because we want asymptotic safety means there's a UV fixed point. Okay. So uh, we think about other more general interactions or gauge theories. 
where well, maybe B can have the other sign. For instance, like in the hypercharge in the standard model. Okay, and then you would say that, well, we have this infrared fixed point here and then so uh, the beta function should go up and then maybe go down. So this green point, this is the wanted one, okay, because it has the right slope here for a UV attractive fixed point. But it turns out that this cannot be realized in just with gauge theories. Okay, that's a theorem from 2016, okay. Um, so we have to do more. We, but we would like to get it that, that the beta function looks like this because we are interested in this fixed point, but we know now uh, we have to add more stuff, okay? You can't just do it with QCD alone. You need more interactions and uh, yes. And the answer is uh, you need your cover couplings. You need your cover couplings. So um, because you need this coupled system of a gauge coupling, I called it the alpha S because this is how we started. And alpha Y, alpha Y is a U cover coupling. So a coupling of uh, two fermions to uh, a scalar. And the beta functions, they become a coupled system of differential equations in alpha S and alpha Y. Okay. And uh, alpha S looks like bef as before with this B and the C coefficients, but now there's a D coefficient. So the Yukawa couplings, they mix onto the beta function of the gauge interactions and they come here with the minus sign. So they can kind of compensate the previous ones. Okay. And then there's, of course, also an, an energy dependence in the, in the Yukawa couplings itself and also I, the, the gauge coupling mixes back, okay. So you can study this system and you find that they are actually interacting fixed points, okay. And the fixed point values, uh, uh, you can find, um, it requires first of all that the speed coefficient is negative. Um, then there's of course the, the freedom one, the free one when both couplings vanish. And then there's one which is fully interacting. Okay, and it, it, you, can, you can solve this, okay? And uh, um, so the prerequisite to achieve in this theory model, a UV interacting fixed point is you need Yukawa couplings, you need this D coefficient, and this D coefficient has to be sizable. It has to be really big. And that's not easy to get. Okay. And, um, and what you also need, you need the speed coefficient to be negative. So you need your covers and the speed coefficient to be negative. Okay. So let's start with, let's get closer to model building. Okay. Um, this is a little bit the blueprint of these type of models. And this should look familiar to you because it looks almost like a standard model type theory. So G mu nu, G mu nu, this is uh, like uh, what the gauge bosons are doing. They propagate and they can also couple to themselves. Um, then there's this Dirac type term for fermions, uh, which couple over this covariant derivative to the gauge group, to the gauge bosons. Then there's a Yukawa coupling, fermions, I call them here Psi, to a scalar S with a Yukawa coupling Y. And then there's a scalar potential. So it's just a function of S, okay? And uh, so this is what comes out of this model building that's driven by the idea, let's construct something that has a UV fixed point that's interacting, okay? And that actually is a super interesting for phenomenology, okay? Because it has all the stuff we have already in the standard model, um, gauge interactions, we have fermions and we have scalars. And, uh, and on top of all of this, there is a flavor symmetry. So these new fermions and this new scalar, uh, they carry flavor. And it's more flavorful than in the standard model. So, these psi's, they, they come in different generations. They are vector-like, okay? So 
unlike in the standard model, the left and the right chiral component have the same gauge interactions. And uh, this new uh, scalar, this S field, it has two indices. And this is something we don't know from the standard model. And these are two uh, flavor indices. So it's not a number and it's not like uh, uh, the, the quarks which carry one flavor index like first, second and third generation. This is a matrix in flavor space, okay? This, we don't know this type of object, object from the standard model. There is no such thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a matrix field, okay? So there are, and the reason why we need it to be a matrix is we have to induce this D coefficient and the D coefficient has to be sizable. And the D coefficient in this matrix field, it goes with the number of flavor squared. So it's exponent, it's, it's quadratically with NF, okay? And if you don't have this uh, matrix structure, it's only linear, okay? So, so you need that. You can't get it to work without this matrix field, okay? So, um, um, so from a theory idea already, we have particle content and flavor symmetry that we have not been thought of before, okay? So it's really new directions for uh, model building from this asymptotic safety idea, okay? So why do we like asymptotic safety in model building? Well, we have a, a very well-behaved theory. We have no poles, we have stability. Everything is smoothly connected by randomization group running, uh, we can term these type of models, um, UV complete, okay? Mm -hmm. So they are very beautiful uh, and very controlled models. And they come in with really nice phenomenological objects, okay? And in fact, concrete standard model obtain, uh, extensions have been obtained and written down already in 2017. And um, I will give you a flavor of them uh, shortly. So one reason, of course, I should also say this, uh, why is there a, little, a bit of a boost in this type of model building at the moment? And the answer is that, of course, you have to compute beta functions at higher loop level. Uh, and there's uh, technology available. There are also computational tools uh, available, like this code, it's called Argus, okay? So you have to design models and you have to play with uh, models and beta functions and the beta functions, they should be, they are dependent on the number of flavors and you can put the fermions in different representations of standard model gauge group and so on. And you don't, you want to have this analytically. So you don't want to fix it and then run it through. No, you want to have analytical results. So, so this availability of tools has given a boost to this type of model data. So sometimes it's really good to do some, well, to advance technology, loop technology. Okay. So, uh, so yes, so the, the answer is okay. So we can clearly say that this asymptotic safety, it gives new direction for this X that we are uh, looking for. And uh, we will see that it also induces new signatures for the LHC. So, so uh, yes, so there are new vector-like fermions and they can be in different representations. So they can be cut, they can carry color or they can be charged under the SU2 left or hy hypercharge and so on. And uh, uh, we did a scan at that point. Uh, so Psi has in a representation under QCD, under SU2 and here without hypercharge. And, and this is a bit of a scan. Um, how many of them do you need uh, for asymptotic safety? Okay, so um, on the left plot, uh, we see that, uh, so this is um, depending on the representation under QCD and for different values of the representation under SU2, okay? So sometimes you, you, you can start with very little, uh, and when and have really small or at the end the level of standard model multiplicities, but sometimes you need an F to be really uh, large. And, and so this is just a flavor that you can really systematically 
map this out and you also find that, well, maybe it's interesting also to study uh, fermions in well, not the uh, fundamental representation. You can also look for higher representations and uh, clearly uh, um, predictions for the LHC like digit searches or erhatrons. Once they are charged under QCD, you can pair produce them. Okay. So uh, let's check a little bit uh, the renormalization group evolution. Okay. So um, this is the standard model. And you see uh, on the x-axis, it starts with the, it's in GEV, the scale. Okay, and it starts at a TV and then it goes to the Planck scale and we even plotted it much, much further until this Landau pole here kicks in and we can't plot anymore because we are losing control at about 10 to the 40 GV. Okay, so, uh, so uh, this clearly is an extrapolation because we don't know what happens at the Planck scale maybe quantum gravity will change everything, but uh, assuming that this is a small effect, uh, it will look like this, okay? You see that alpha three, this is the strong coupling, it drops and it goes to asymptotic freedom. Um, alpha two also drops, but uh, a bit slower. And alpha one is the one with the, with the Landau pole, okay? And the other interesting stuff is the uh, this is the self-coupling of the Higgs, alpha lambda, and we plot here its uh, magnitude because it does change sign at 10 to the 10 GV. So this is why we only plot its magnitude. So, so this bridge here is for negative values, which is why the standard model is only uh, beta stable and not stable, okay, up to the Planck scale. And at some point, the, the sign flips back, okay. So, uh, so a, a different version of asymptotic safety or a more general variant of that, uh, it's, it's called Planck safety. So when we say Planck safety, we say a model, a BSM standard model extension, uh, it should have no poles and no instabilities up to the Planck scale. So asymptotic safety, safe models have it for any scale up to arbitrarily high energies. But when we talk about Planck safety, we only say, okay, we are, we are good at the Planck scale because maybe afterwards at higher energies, gravity will also uh, do stuff. And actually this type of model building exists. And uh, uh, I will talk about uh, solutions in the context of G minus two. Okay, so these safety, it can fix things. Okay, it can explain data that the standard model can't explain. Um, uh, these Planck safe models, they have also been used to explain uh, flavor anomalies uh, like uh, BS mu mu and uh, also uh, this charm CP U spin puzzle lately. Okay, but uh, I will talk uh, for the last uh, part of my, my lecture on. Uh, on G minus two, okay, one of the anomalies in the standard model uh, with leptons, okay? And G minus two, okay, it's the anomalous magnetic moment. Uh, and uh, the most famous one is of course, it's the muon, but there's also a deviation uh, in the electron one, okay? And uh, here are the data for the electrons, okay? And uh, there are two data points uh, obtained by different collaborations. And there's a measurement uh, with, uh, with cesium. So, so they are not measuring uh, the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron. They measure the, uh, the hyper, uh, the, the fine structure constant, and that's an input, okay? And measurements of the fine structure constant in cesium, they result in a 2.4 deviation from the standard model, okay? And a later one using rubidium, uh, it, uh, it is consistent with the standard model at 1.6 sigma, okay? So in total, the two measurements or the two extractions of uh, the fine 
structure constant, they disagree at more than five sigma. So this is clearly a puzzle that's in the basket of, of, of these uh, atomic physicists, okay? But uh, uh, either way, um, well, we can go on and see where we go, go with these two determinations or um, I don't think one should average them, okay? I think they have their own systematics. Okay, so, uh, okay, so one can make a plot um, with the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon versus the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron. Okay, and one can put these two data points. So the, the value of the muon is 3.7 sigma uh, away from the standard model using uh, uh, the uh, uh, dispersion relation for the hadronic vacuum polarization. I should say this because there's uh, two determinations. There's also a more recent lattice one. And the lattice one is, is kind of consistent with the standard model. So this is also a big, debate at the moment, okay? But uh, for this value, this was when we made this plot, uh, um, where there are now two data points. One is with cesium and one is with rubidium, okay? And uh, so, so now we have measured something with muons and we have measured something with electrons. So it's, two. it's the same thing, but with different leptons. And one can ask, uh, 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 well, what uh, we can ask about the flavor structure, for instance. And there's a minimal prediction that these anomalous magnetic moments, they always scale with their mass squared. This is this blue band here. So either way, uh, whether it's rubidium or it's cesium, uh, it's not minimal, okay? So, um, so you need something else. So most of the models that actually have a minimal scaling. But you can also have a models that have a, they don't scale quadratically, but they scale linear. And those are the ones that are call, called the chirally enhanced. And we will use both of these mechanisms because you can imagine that, well, if you have two of these mechanisms, one is quadratic and one is linear, you can do superpositions and you can essentially uh, get any value here in this plane with this type of construction that doesn't require any breaking of uh, a lepton flavor. Okay, so how can we explain these values? So, um, well, an anomalous magnetic moment is essentially a coupling of this lepton to the photon. So you can induce it in a loop if you wish. And the classic uh, proposal is with uh, Yukawa couplings. Um, so you say, well, there's the standard model. Um, and we add to the standard model a new type of fermion, Psi. So then you can do these loops with Psi and the Higgs, OK? And uh, that's the classic idea, but it, it fails. You can't uh, accommodate the data. Uh, because uh, well, uh, for various reasons. Um, and the biggest problem is uh, that uh, fermions do mix, okay? And um, you, are you will be violating bounds, uh, uh, couplings to the Z, okay, from this. So, so this diagram here is proportional to kappa squared. So kappa is this Yukawa coupling the Yukawa coupling between the muon, the Higgs, and the Psi. So this is kappa squared, okay? So you can ask how large should kappa be to accommodate the data. And then you find that, well, with this type of value of kappa, you will affect uh, the branching ratios of the Z to muons. So you can't do it, it's ruled out, okay? You can't explain G minus two of the muon with that. Um, but what you can do, is well, you add this, you take the same term with the kappa, but you add two more things. You add also a term with another Yukawa coupling, kappa prime, with the psi. So A are the left handed standard model fermions, and E are the right handed standard model leptons. Okay, so A and E are standard model, 
And then you add this S field that I talked about, this new magic ingredient from asymptotic safety and Psi. So you have a second Yukawa coupling, uh, a portal coupling between standard model, the field E, and new physics, S and Psi. And you need a portal to the Higgs. So H dagger H is just, H is the Higgs, the standard model Higgs, and this, it's at the normalizable level, you can write down four scalars coupling together in four dimension. So, and that's gauge invariant and it respects flavor symmetry. So this is a portal coupling, S dagger S and delta is this portal coupling, it's quartic coupling, okay. So you need kappa, kappa prime, and delta, okay. And when you have this, uh, you can explain the muon anomalous magnetic moment from this loop, which is proportional to kappa prime square. So before it didn't work because there's, a con there's an upper limit on kappa because kappa changes the coupling of the Z, okay? But kappa prime uh, doesn't, it's not the coupling with the Higgs, so it has no effect on the Z coupling, so it can be much larger, okay? So if you can explain the muon and anomalous magnetic moment with this kappa coupling, okay? And for the electron anomalous magnetic moment, you are involving this highly enhanced term, which is just lin which is linearly with the electron mass, which is really useful because the electron mass is really a small number, okay? So it's this diagram. So this diagram is then proportional to kappa, kappa prime, and here we have this, what we call Higgs scalar mixing, okay? It's proportional to this coupling delta. So you need this portal interaction, okay? So with this, you can do it, okay? Vanilla parameter space. So the answer is, how would you imagine, why would you come up with such a kind of fancy uh, Lagrangian term, okay? And the answer is, well, this is what you get from Planck safety, or this is what you get from asymptotic safety. So asymptotic safety provides really real solutions to real problems, okay? So with this Lagrangian, you can, you can, uh, you can reach uh, easily um, almost any place in this, in this uh, you can actually reach every, every, everyone in this half plane, okay? So uh, it's, an, it's a novel, novel solution to, to this muon. Uh, and electron uh, anomalous magnetic moment problem. Okay, so uh, finally, um, so if you if you think this is a good idea because it is, explains the problem, uh, can we check, can we look for these particles? Can we look for psi or s at the LHC? And the answer is yes, with multi-lepton signatures and there are already constraints. Okay, so we have this Lagrangian, we have, uh, uh, these type of coupling. And I wrote it down here a bit more specific by putting flavor indices, okay? So the muon is here inside, so L has flavors and the psi have flavors, okay? So, and I'm writing down here invariance, okay? And kappa prime is also linking the flavor of the right-handed lepton to the scalars and the new lepton. Okay, and and that's that's uh, that's a result of this flavor symmetry. So there is a flavor symmetry. Okay, and this flavor symmetry is uh, is is really uh, uh, the cause why we can uh, look for these particles at the LHC in multi lepton signatures. And and the the buzzword here is quasi LFV signatures. So LFV means lepton flavor violation. So if the muon decays to an electron and a photon, that's a lepton flavor violating process, okay? Lepton flavor is violated. But here you can do uh, funny things. Um, this flavor, we are linking here BSM flavor to the standard model flavor and that flavor is conserved. So for instance, we can start with an electron flavor psi, then it decays to this scalar, one flavor index is also an electron because that flavor needs to be conserved. But then there's a second index, which could be an electron or a muon and a tau, and is matched with the other 
lepton here. So now this S field decays further to two leptons, okay? So at the end, you are getting a final state that is uh, a plus, a minus, and an electron, okay? So, uh, and, and, and these L's, okay, uh, uh, they can have, uh, they can be muons or they can be taus, okay? So uh, it looks like you can, so the final state could be mu plus, mu minus, E minus. So it looks like as if lepton flavor is violated, but it isn't. The flavor uh, symmetry is conserved. But that's a very good way to suppress standard model backgrounds because the standard model conserves lepton flavor. Okay, so let's see how this works. So uh, how can we look for this model in the LHC? So you can pair produce the size. Okay, uh, so by quark fusion, and uh, they are the psi's don't couple to QCD, but they are charged under uh, SU two and the hypercharge. So you fuse quarks, and then over gamma Z or W, uh, you can pair produce them, or you can produce them also singly. Okay. So it's easy to produce the fermions because the fermions are charged under the standard model. And this is a plot uh, that shows uh, the allowed parameter space when confronting this model to uh, a CMS analysis, a multi-lepton search at CMS, okay, in this paper. Okay, so the two plots are scalar mass versus fermion mass, okay? And there are two plots because there are two models. In one model, the psi's are singlets under SU2, and in the other model, they are doublets under SU2, okay? And the, uh, the, the region that is excluded is the one around this, uh, this, this violet hatched area, okay? So we see that actually this model that has been coming a very long way from a beautiful theoretical idea can be confronted to data at the LHC such that we know that, well, when MS and MF, where it, when the fermion and the scalar, they have a similar mass, uh, this is excluded, okay? So the LHC can probe these type of theory ideas. On the other hand, everything that's out, uh, that's not in this hatched area, that is allowed. So there are a few points that are allowed. And the uh, doublet model is sub subject to stronger constraints because it's, if you wish, a doublet, it's small particles. So cross sections are higher and constraints will be stronger. Okay. But also with this doublet model, they are allowed uh, regions of parameter space. So the fermion has to be at least 800 GV heavy but the scalar can be lighter or uh, heavier than the thumb, okay. And for these surviving points, in particular these yellow ones here, uh, we can produce some, uh, well, this is the, the analysis we did to arrive at this plot. So this is the search by, by CMS, and there's a standard model background in green, and there's uh, these, these data points by CMS and our yellow parameter points are shown here in the three points in each case, singlet and doublet. They are shown here by blue, uh, red and black. And you see that way well, they are below the data, okay? So they are allowed, That's an, these are allowed points, okay? So this is an analysis with 77 Point four inverse to bond. So clearly, there's more to expect, and uh, and uh, also the observable here is uh, is not ideal. That's the uh, that's the observable that CMS used uh, for their search. So we constructed new observables which are standard model null tests because the standard model uh, doesn't have lepton flavor violation. Um, the standard model um, conserves lepton flavor, when you tune an observable such that it is only sensitive to lepton flavor violation, it is, it's very good and you are highlighting your signal. And because of this, uh, uh, the scalar matrix field here, we, uh, we were able to, okay? 
So you look for opposite sign, opposite flavor observables that look quasi-lepton uh, flavor violating. So they have electrons and muons and so on. Okay, And you look for bumps in two leptons, then you have a scalar, or you look for bumps in three leptons, then you have a uh, then you have the fermion, okay? So uh, this is how it looks like with 150 inverse femtobahn so, uh, for, uh, for the singlet in three different observables, okay? M2A, M3A, so M2A is sensitive to scalars, M3A is sensitive to fermions, okay? And that's the normal version. And when there's this label diff, it means we've tuned into only uh, the ones with different fermion flavors, so electrons and muons. So uh, for instance, the plot here on the right, so when you look into this uh, 3L distribution, you see that once you turn to this null test, so that one that uses only different leptons, the standard model background is essentially gone. So upon critical inspection, you of course note this, this is a very nice observable, but the event rate is very low. So it means that uh, this is an ideal application for the high luminosity LHC. So we did this analysis again. And uh, uh, and then, of course, event rates are much, much higher but because it's just more higher luminosity. OK. So. Um, so we started from a theoretical idea and we created models, models that can fix things, for instance, explaining G minus two of the electron and the muon. And they can they also invite a new type of search at the LHC. So this type of model, they can also do more. So I'm just browsing here because my time is up. They can explain B anomalies. They can also explain uh, anomalies in CP violation in the charm sector. They avoid Landau poles, okay? And uh, I think it's, 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 it's this one example where a new theory idea uh, has an impact in phenomenology. So again, asymptotic safety gives you directions to construct new models that have no poles, they have no instabilities. Uh, so they are, uh, they are UV complete, if you wish. And uh, they have very good uh, theoretical um, control, um, but you can also see that they they come in, they bring in new features to model space. It is because of this asymptotically safe model building that we have the scalar with two flavor indices, a scalar matrix field, and these quasi lepton flavor violating signatures. Uh, so uh, of course, so it really means that if you have a good theory idea, you can pursue it, and you can actually. Uh, do phenomenology uh, with it. This is, of course, just an example, but of course, an example I'm very excited about, as you know. Um, and there's, I would love to talk more about this, but my time is up. 